Hey guys, happy Friday. I can't believe it's Friday already, but here we are. So happy Friday. I hope you're all doing really well out there today and getting ready for the weekend. Uh, you know, we've spent a lot of time over the course of about almost the last year now. I think since like November, December of 2019, we've been talking about Docker and, and Docker containers and applications and self-hosting. Uh, you know, last week we spent a good amount of time talking about uh, server security and best practices, things like that, using Cloudflare and that sort of thing. Today we're going to talk about something we should have talked about a long time ago, uh, but because I'm I'm, I'm kind of disorganized, uh, we're going to get to it today. And today we're going to talk about how to run backups on your server. Okay, so without too much more introduction here, let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at what we're going to need in order to get this done. So uh, here we can see that this is uh, hub.locker.com. Uh, again, we're big fans of LinuxServer.io, and we're actually going to use uh, their stack that they've got right here. I'm just gonna change it a little bit. So uh, we're gonna use a version 2.1, services duplicati from Linux server, container names duplicati. Uh, the PUID and PGID, uh, I actually like to run this as root. Uh, it's not advisable most of the time to run as root, but uh, when we're talking backups, I don't want anything to possibly go wrong with permissions. So I'm gonna run this as root, which is gonna be zero, zero. Uh, so zero for PUID, zero for PGID. Time zone uh, is gonna be uh, America Denver for me. In fact, I tell you what, I can just come over to here. So uh, here you can see I've got zero and zero, America, Denver. Um, my configuration folder uh, is uh, that that's where I'm gonna store my data for this. And then uh, I'm gonna skip backups for just a moment. So my configuration folder goes uh, right here in this duplicati under configs. And then my source, uh, you can name this whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, we're just gonna call it source. Uh, and that's also going to be this configs folder because my source is going to be where all of my configuration files are for all of my different uh, running containers. Um, so that's where that's gonna come in. That'll make more sense when I actually show you the user interface. Um, now, the other thing you'll notice here is that this is, you know, SRV dev disk by label files. Same with this third option here, this third uh, volume. But right here in the middle, we've got dev disk by label backups. And that's because I've got uh, a second hard drive. You're going to want to move this to a different hard drive. You're going to need a second hard drive. I don't know how else to word that. You're going to need an additional bit of storage, an additional hard drive of some variety to run your backups. You don't want to run a backup on on the hard drive you're backing up. It doesn't make sense. If that hard drive crashes, you're going to lose your data and your backups. So backups go on a different drive. That's all I can say there. Um, and also make sure that your, let's say your your data or your, 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 your application drive, wherever you're installing everything, let's say that's a two terabyte drive. Make sure your backup drive is at least two terabytes. Um, just because if you fill up that, that main drive, you can't back up two terabytes of data on a 500 gig hard drive. It just, it, the math doesn't work. So your backup drive needs to be larger, at least larger than your, your configuration folders or where you stored your applications. So for this backups, what I'm gonna do is come over here to open Media Vault. Uh, I'm going to um, add uh, a new uh, shared folder called backups. Uh, I'm going to put this on my backups drive. Here you can see those are individually labeled. I'm gonna put that on backups. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that my, my read write permissions are for everybody. I'll click save. Um, and then what I can do is, is inspect that. Uh, of course, the screen moved as I clicked. So let's try that again. Uh, we're just gonna grab that, come over to here. Uh, we'll go to portainer and right in there that should be the exact same. Okay, so then the other thing I like to do is come over here to SMB CIFS, uh, make sure that that's enabled by checking to make sure that's green. If it's not, click it, click save, then go to shares um, and add a share. Uh, we'll come over here and we're gonna say backups. That's what we wanna do. Uh, and then only guests and click save. Again, that's just for permissions issues. Uh, I don't want there to be any when it comes to backups and I'll go ahead and say yes. Uh, on that apply. We'll give this a minute to do its thing. Okay, so now we've got our backup folder here and that's good to go. So what we can do, oops, is come back over here. So we've got our configuration folder set up. We've got our backups folder set up and we've got our source folder set up here. We're gonna run this on port 8200. Uh, of course, you needed to change that. Uh, you shouldn't, I've never seen anything else on port 8200. Uh, you know, you can make this 8201 or whatever. Um, but just make sure you only change the first half of that. Uh, don't change the uh, the second half. Don't change this part right here. Uh, so once you've got all of that, uh, make sure you've given it a name, click deploy. 
We'll give this a minute to do its thing. So that's deployed and then we can click on here. Just make sure that services.d done. Uh, that's what we're looking for there. And, and then we'll come over here. Uh, we'll give this a second to load up. So here we are, we're logged in. Uh, there's nothing going on here. It's a fresh install, shouldn't be anything in here. First thing we wanna do is add a local backup. So we're gonna configure a new backup and we'll click next. Uh, we're gonna, we can call this whatever we wanna call it. Uh, we'll call it uh, server uh, backups. You can probably put a space in there. I'm just not going to. You can put a description in if you want to, if that's helpful for you. Uh, encryption, I, I actually highly encourage you to do encryption uh, for the sake of this this video. Keeping things simple, I'm not going to do encryption. Uh, this, is, this is one of those do as I say, not as I do situations. So we'll go ahead and uh, I'm gonna say no encryption, but you should. Then I'll click next. So this is gonna go on a, uh, a local drive. Again, this is going to be that, ex that extra hard drive that I attached. Um, so where did we put that? Uh, let's go back over here and take a look. Uh, that was called backups. So we'll come over here. Right there is where we're going to store uh, our backup. Uh, if this was somewhere remote on a different server, uh, if you needed permissions because you didn't make everything easily writable, you can put your username and password here. Uh, I don't need to, so I'll just click test connection. Hey, it worked. If it didn't, it would throw a different error or it would throw an error, not a, a success message. Uh, so that's good to go. So then we can click on source data. Uh, so then what we wanna do is come over to here. And we wanna scroll down to where we see source. Um, this is uh, the, the what we mounted right here. That's what we're looking for is source, we found it. If I open this up, you can actually see uh, the different applications that are that are in that folder. So I've got AdGuard, DocuWiki, Duplicati, which of course uh, we're using right now, and Plex. So what I wanna do uh, is I want to, normally I would click next, but if you wanted to uh, add filters, um, you know, exclude certain files, that sort of thing, uh, you could use regex there. Uh, I'm actually going to delete that. If you wanted to exclude hidden files, system files, temp files, files larger than whatever, you can include all of that uh, in here. I don't want to exclude anything, so I'll click next. Uh, now we want to decide when to run. Uh, you might want to run every day. Uh, that, that for me is a bit much. I'm going to say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I want to say I'm going to run that at 1 a.m. when I'm usually asleep. Uh, you don't want to run this in the middle of the day or when you're going to be on your server a lot. Uh, it may bog down your server, make things hard to access. So I try to do it at a time when you're not going to be around or using your server. So go ahead and click next. Uh, the remote file size, uh, this is probably fine. Uh, I've done it at 100 on my other server, um, but 50 is probably fine. Uh, you can say uh, you want to keep all backups, delete backups that are older than. So let's say you only want to keep three months worth of backups. You could say delete older than uh, three months. Anything older than three months gets deleted. This is super handy if you're backing up uh, uh, to a, a remote storage uh, and you don't want to overload, say like Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever, or maybe you just don't want to overload your backups, uh, your local backups. Uh, you've got the option to delete uh, files that are older than, you can keep a specific number of backups. You can put in, I only want to keep three backups or, um, you know, there, there are lots of different options in here. I'm just going to say keep all for the sake of right now. We'll say save. So uh, now it's just going to automatically start running this backup here. And right, oops, come on, where are you? Right there, right here. Uh, is my uh, backups folder. Uh, here it's doing its thing. It's compressing everything, putting everything into some zip files. And here in just a moment, we should actually see those zip files show up right in here. Okay, so there they are. Uh, they, they, the system automatically kicked them over there. So now we actually have a good backup of our server. But uh, let's say something horrible happens, uh, like your house burns down. Um, you're going to lose this. So what we want to do now is add another backup. Uh, we're going to configure a new backup. We're going to call this uh, remote. Uh, again, you can put in a description if you wanted to. Again, I encourage encryption. I'm going to say next. So this time we're going to come down here. We're going to say we're going to log into Google Drive. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, Tanix remote uh, demo. And then I'm going to get an authorization ID. I'm going to go ahead and log in. We'll say allow. 
and we're gonna go ahead and test that connection. Now it should throw up a message saying, hey, that folder doesn't exist. Uh, do you wanna create it now? Uh, yeah, yes, I do. Thank you very much. So it's testing, it's testing the connection, the connection worked. So I was able to create the folder, so we're good to go there. Now we can say, uh, what do we want to do next? What we wanna do is actually come over here to backups. These backups that we just created, uh, if we remember here, that's that's where we store our backups is in this uh, backups folder. So we're just gonna run the, our, our uh, source is going to be that backups folder. So we've got a few files there. We're gonna go ahead and click on next. We're gonna schedule this. Um, again, we wanna automatically run everything, but we don't wanna run it Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 1 a.m. because that's, that's when we run our local backups. So we'll say Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Um, I also encourage you to do alternating days like this uh, for, for your remote backups, because if a, if, a, if a local backup, you set that for 1 a.m., if it takes five hours, but you've got your remote backup to start at three, it's gonna get super confused and it's not gonna work. So I try to stagger my, my local and my remote backups to avoid any kind of confusion. Um, so we're gonna run this at 1 a.m., Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and then we'll go ahead and click on next. Again, you can uh, decide how you want this to handle. I would leave this just the exact same as far as the remote volume size. Whatever you set up your your, your local backups to be, set that for your remote backups as well. Um, and then for this, again, you can decide how many backups you wanna keep, uh, that sort of thing. So we'll go ahead and click on save. Uh, again, we're gonna say, yeah, and continue without encryption, that's fine. So then I'm gonna go ahead and open uh, my Google Drive over here uh, in a different window, because uh, I got all kinds of stuff you don't need to see. So, uh, there we go. Let's drag this back up to here. Got it. And right here, Tanix Remote Demo. You can see I've done a few of these uh, for testing purposes, uh, but this is the one we just created. If I open that up, there's nothing in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop this down and put that over there. And then this remote backup, I'm gonna run right now. And I'll just put those next to each other. So it's verifying the backend data. There's really nothing it needs to do other than grab those files and push them up uh, like you can see it's doing right here. So I'll give this a moment to, uh, to finish uploading. We should get about three files um, and there they are. So it's verifying that everything went. Uh, it's checking all of those to make sure everything looks good for file sizes, file names, that sort of thing. Once it's done verifying, now we're good to go. Uh, so we have officially run uh, a full backup of our server uh, using a, a service called Duplicati as a container on our Docker system. And of course, this is only half the battle. Uh, I, and and I'm, I'm doing this on purpose. We're gonna uh, have a, a restoration of these backups in a separate video. This video is already long enough. So we're going to have a separate video showing how to do a restoration of your backups. Uh, so hopefully this video is helpful, a good kind of primer to get, get you going with at least getting your system backed up. So if something does go wrong, uh, you can go to my other video and learn how to, how to restore all of those old backups. So I hope you found the video helpful. And if you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It really does actually help me quite a bit. Uh, since I've been asking for that, and you guys have been amazing at giving me the thumbs up. My views have actually gone up. My subs have gone up. Everything has gone up. So thank you very much for that. Uh, as always, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons. You guys are amazing. Thanks so much for helping me cover some extra bills every month. Much, much appreciated. So uh, if you want to become a patron, uh, links are in the description. So I uh, definitely check that out. Uh, but with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.